Hi, my name is Mia, and I'm still trying to figure out how to work these videos and the time limits, etc., for YouTube. I I just um, I'm kind of nervous. I had a test on Friday, which because of the testing accommodations I could have taken it Monday but and I had another one Wednesday and then I have four this week so I'm supposed to be studying and I'm just I'm tired I had stomach ache and headache which I usually don't get earlier today and I ran to the store and got my daughter some stuff and then I end up getting scrap booking supplies I've been wanting to do I mean I, some people are like oh I do scrap booking oh it's like major cult or something I was like oh, I don't want to do that but there's a lot of things I would throw away or the fact that we don't have pictures taken anymore because I take pictures of digital things and try to print it on my printer and then it comes out all weird and sideways and run out of ink and so sometimes I throw things away and I think oh I if I had a scrapbook we could have a couple family memories here or there we could look through which would just add to the stuff we already have it's kind of sad, you know, I have a child who had everything on the computer when he was younger and now that computer has many times been reformatted and that we don't even, this was 10, 11 years ago, but he doesn't have baby pictures. He has a couple that we took uh, film pictures of that survived, so sometimes I think, you know, I think I look at the scrapbooking stuff and I, I usually... I'll buy some of the stickers for my daughter. Some of the stuff it just ends up being a big mess on the floor and unorganized. But today she bought one uh, actual book for her school project. She has a book she uses every year. She just t puts the stuff in, takes it out, and then recreates it or uses boxes or whatever. So this time I said, let's, let's buy a family scrapbook. And then I bought a 25 pack of protective sheets, and those ended up being not fitting because the holes of the scrapbook were here and the other holes were like this and there was a slit in it but it there's no way I mean it just was sliding all over the place it's like oh I said let's make a bunch of pages and put them all over the walls as you see my walls there's a lot of stuff on the walls but there's it's somewhat organized in here the walls downstairs, it is chaos. I don't know what is wrong with me. I started taking some of the stuff. People helped us clean. Like, all this stuff can't be all over. you got to throw all this stuff away. So I threw all this stuff away. And then I put up some of my school stuff, studying for boards and posters and all kinds of stuff I had made. I was like, well, if I look at this stuff, that will be another thing that I can get in my memory really fast, especially since I made some of those stuff, about posters about stomach and different things. So we were having some inspections and I took some of the posters down and my daughter's like why did you take these posters I love seeing the anatomy of the human body and all it's like well I mean it's either going to be I'm not going to throw it away it's either going to be in the closet collecting dust and I'll be looking for it when I want it or it's going to be on the wall where every time I walk by it's like oh yeah that's the name of that bone I was trying to think of that today you know I don't I mean you can look everything up online but I like to feel things I like glossy shiny things so right now I um I just tried I spent a long time trying to upload a video and it wouldn't work. And this the next one. I I increased my memory on YouTube and I'm I don't want I don't know why it takes so long to upload stuff, but I don't wanna wait forever. It's ridiculous. Like I don't wanna wait. I don't wanna re wait. But I I have my some of my notebooks upstairs, um, for school I can re-upload it. It just took a really long time and apparently I had to keep the device from turning off because of inactivity. So this is just a recap. Um, the video that I just tried posting and didn't work, I babbled on and on. It's basically like a journal diary entry. The biggest thing that I, the conclusion at the end was no matter how much people act like jerks, um, it distracts me, it makes me cry, it makes me feel like I don't belong in my society. I mean, we all pay 
taxes. We all pay, you know, we pay our sale. We don't pay sale. We pay gas taxes. We we pay taxes for electricity and energy. Um, why do I not feel like I deserve it? You know, all of my neighbors, except for one, with 21 in this complex, everyone except for the manager, and you can't even count her, is from a foreign country. And why do I feel like I don't belong? And it's like, there's a lot of um, public service. I'm not against get people getting public services. I have on and off got some public services, um, and people complain. And people on my um, church complain about people on food stamps, and they had a thing where people would get steaks and lobsters and stuff. And someone's like, this is just a scam. Or, These people are actually, they're, yeah, they're using food stamps and buying steaks, and then they're reselling the steaks for cash. And, I mean, one way or another, when I saw the ad, I saw they're getting steaks and lobsters and stuff. It's like, at least they're getting something real. Why, what if they were just getting some, you know, processed chemical carcinogenic frozen food item for their kids and it's causing them to get ADD and it's causing them to be on medications and it's causing them to do destruction because their medication has bad side effects. Like, in my mind, I thought, a lot of meat is steak. At least it's an actual piece of meat and not some thing made in a laboratory. But, I mean, I can, people work, I was working full time. I received some government assistance, but, I mean, I was paying as much as I was getting. So it's not always, it's like, I mean, I was, I think I was paying more for taxes going out of my paycheck than I was getting in assistance. So you have to look at it that way. And these people, some of these people that have these big families, if they don't like it, they feel like they're being left out. Maybe they could apply for it. But it's nice, it would be nice if you had two parents working or one parent doing child care and the other one working and have enough money to buy your house and have relatives help you out with stuff and babysit and help. Maybe maybe grandma wants to buy the kids school clothes every fall or something. We don't. I mean, my kids don't get that stuff. I have to pay daycare. We're supposed to be charged. I have 11 and 13 year old which are old enough to stay home. Wow, it's, it's, it's sad to realize because of racism I can't get a house next to their school and it's sad to realize that I have to get a bill for seven hundred something dollars, seven eight hundred dollars a month for them to go to daycare for two hours after school. Plus the fees you pay in the fall for registration fees, insurance, all this extra fees for because there's days they don't have school and I, I have school early and their school is not open to ten, so I have to pay hundred something dollar. You know. I mean, it sucks. If if I could get a house next to them, then I would have that much money in my pocket or I could use that money I could say well maybe I'll just buy the house instead of renting the house and then not send them to the daycare and then I'll have that much more money to pay my mortgage with <laughs> like I try to think of like or we would have more time the kids could make some of our food from scratch or I don't know instead of the time they could walk to home and I could meet them at home There'll be an extra hour in my schedule where I could make them chicken and rice, or I could make them any other kind of food instead of some of the snack foods that are more expensive. There's ways I feel like we're being re um, rejected. <laughs> rejected. I just, in my mind, I feel like I prayed, and in the midst of praying, the place where we end up living became our home. And the only reason I the stresses I've had here have been one thing. We have our own four walls. It's a complex, but we have a house. The only thing I can think of is God's trying to use me in some way or God's trying to teach me something that's going to help me. Or, you know, the fact that there's a playground across the street and the highway exit in the back and the windows. There's no windows on the side except, well, there's two windows on the side and a screen door. I mean, there's somewhat privacy once you have the blinds and stuff shut. It's noisy, but it's... I'm getting to the point right now where I feel like God is telling me just stay there. And then the Dave Ramsey tapes come into my head and I'm like, DVDs. Dave Ramsey saying, you know, live above someone's garage and pay, you know, three to six hundred dollars a month and save up your money. I don't I I don't have a career job right now because I'll be I'm not gonna be a doctor for a couple more years. But 
I hear Dave Ramsey saying in my memory saying, live above someone's garage, pay this much money, and then think of what it would be like to save enough money for your house. Pay cash for your house or whatever the deal you always. I mean even even doing it but good down payment is better than Yeah, I wanna say one thing. I had joined a housing program and transferred to a different program. They're supposed to take half year rent money and put in an account so in like three years you're supposed to have all like ten twenty thousand dollars in your account for a down payment because it's a housing program to get you off of these housing these these housing programs they have set up for low-income people they're charging twelve thirteen hundred dollars a month rent for a small place and I say why are we here do people ha here have bad credit is there racial issues a lot of us are the same race or foreigners or people that are students with kids are divorced, they don't have in the right income. Sometimes um, owners of a rental want to see three times income from a real job. It's like, it's kind of sad. I mean, I could have a million dollars. I don't, but I could have a million dollars in the bank and be a full-time student, single parent, and be like, how, how, how about I just pay five years of rent to you right now in a check or cash if you want, like, I wouldn't pay with cash because you want a record of your of your uh, transaction. But how do they know what kind of family I come from? How do they know? They they tell me these people look at me over the phone. They're fine because I speak clear English and I'm oh yeah I'll meet you for this appointment as soon as I walk drive up in a new car. I'm not bragging about it. My old car broke down way too many times and it cost too many thousands of dollars. I could have bought a new car ten times the price is these dealerships were charging me for repairs it's a Kia it's not like I'm not driving some Lamborghini but um it's not new anymore <laughs> but it's like I drive up in a car I me and my kids are well dressed we're coming from church I mean I'm not wearing a prom dress I'm but I'm conservative when I go out in public cuz I gotta have I have dress code so I, don't, well, I can't afford to buy two sets of clothes <clears throat> my raggedy clothes are the stained ones so I come over to these places as soon as we know. We have better qualified individuals. And they're like, don't even bother doing a credit check. It's like, I'm not going to sell up there and tell me no way that you're going to rent to me. I'm not going to waste the 40, 50, 80 bucks on a stupid credit check. It's like, you know what? Poor or not poor, single or not single, divorced or not divorced, no full time job, full time student, two kids, um, African American. You don't know until you see my credit check, or if you do a background, that every house I left, every apartment I left, may not be in spotless better homes and gardens when I lived there, but when we left, there was no sign. Of, it looked like brand new. And no damage, no dirt, no stains on the carpets, unless they were there before I moved in, which is unfortunate. Some of those stains I moved in, I've removed here myself because of it. But they don't know that I can live and be a college student and take care of my kids and pay my rent in full every single month. Every single month. There's not even one blemish on my on my record. I mean, I went out of town and had to make arrangements. And it's like, I gotta send it early, like send it before the first of the month. So you have ten days and you know and that that was my dad's idea. If it was up to me I would have paid them before I left. But he said just just be patient, don't freak out even then and so I just want to say that um, the whole moral of my last story was blah, 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 I rant and raved, God is in charge, God led me here, God led me to the medical school I'm at, God led me to, to flee into poverty to save me and my kids' life, because the life, the person, hus ex-husband I lived with was very dangerous, and he's still dangerous, and we're still hiding from him, but the moral of the story is to love your neighbor like you love yourself, and if you're too stressed out, and this is my teaching, and this is why my son doesn't do what he's supposed to do. He feels sick, and he's coughing in there. Moral of the story is, love your neighbor like you love yourself. If you don't love yourself, take a bath, light a candle, read a book, go see a movie, borrow one from the library. That's free. Call a relative. Call some 85-year-old relative and realize, man, you are blessed. I'm blessed to know you, and you are healthy enough to live to 85 years old. And just, I mean, I'm, I'm talking, preaching to myself here. Take a nap if you need to. Drink some water. Take some fish oil pills. Whatever. Like, do things. Eat a salad. Do things for yourself. So.
I'm going to play a song in one of my videos. See ya.